want to ask him a few questions. But Eddie, if you can kick us off with just um, your thoughts ahead of Friday night's action. Yeah, I mean, uh, fantastic night last Saturday. Anti Joshua defending his unified world championships in London. Um, quite, quite ironic. We were allowed a crowd, uh, a thousand people. It was, it was absolutely sensational to see people back in the arena. And the government just announced about an hour ago they're going to uh, close all that down. So as of Wednesday, there'll be no more crowds. So it, it affects some of our other sports, but. We were lucky enough to at least get a thousand people in for a great night on Saturday. Great performance from Anthony Joshua, a dispatching of uh, Kubrat Pulev, a very tough Kubrat Pulev in nine rounds. And obviously, we all hope that we can uh, get the unification, <clears throat> excuse me, undisputed fight ASAP with Tyson Fury. We will continue to work on that. And of course, this week we have a, a huge night of boxing um, as. The legendary champion just joins us in the Zoom. Um, Gennady Golovkin will make his record-breaking 21st defence of his middleweight world championship against Zerometa at the Hard Rock in Florida, live on the Zone globally. Um, as we know, it's a fantastic opportunity for him to make history the mandatory defence of his IBF world title. Um, and a big card as well. Great fight on the card. I don't know if you guys uh, sometimes when you have a superstar headline and you don't take too much notice of the undercard. One to look out for particularly, Ali Akhmedov against Gongora. Great fight for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Uh, Hun Min Choi, our WBA Super Featherweight Women's World Champion, will also defend her title on the card. Reshat Matty on the card. England's John Ryder just had a great fight with Callum Smith for the Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And uh, that's all before we head to Texas, of course, for uh, the Canelo Alvarez against Callum Smith fight on Saturday. So another incredible weekend of boxing on the zone. Before uh, Triple G joins us, I'm uh, happy to answer any questions um, as we get ready for another huge week. Okay, great. Donna, with the first question, please. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Good, mate. Very good. Um, I, I, I just want a quick one for this. This isn't my, my main question, but it, it's coming up to the morning time when people will be waking up on the West Coast in America. Have you had any calls from Las Vegas regarding what happened? <laughs> I, I had one last night. I had a brief one last night. Um, there's been a lot of call, there's been a lot of conversations over the, the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I didn't want to do too much because one, I hate putting a jinx on it, and two, I want AJ's attention. You know, when we're going through the details of the deal, and obviously now he can focus on that. Um, you know, had a good chat with Bob last night and we're all of exactly the same mission to get this fight made as soon as possible. Um, we are starting now to look at the contracts, draft the contracts. There's not really a lot to agree, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously we know um, the split is already agreed. Really, we've got to look at where it's going to take place and iron out a few um, contractual issues on the TV partners. And, and I think we're, we're there. I'm very confident we're going to get it made. I wanted to ask you, though, about uh, 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 Scott Coker, who you've spoken to about potentially having Katie Taylor fight Chris Cyborg. He told me this week that he is also interested in putting on the Dylan Dennis and Jake Paul fight. Are you really interested in, in perhaps promoting that? Um, no, I'm going to take a little bit of a sabbatical from the YouTube stuff. I, uh, I, I, I kicked the ball off last year, and now everyone's trying to do it. Um, I actually said to Floyd on... Um, Saturday night, he was at the AJ fight. I said, you need to be careful. This is a very, very tough fight you have with Logan Paul. And he asked me, are you serious? I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think uh, Jake, Jake Paul's okay. You know, Jake Paul's a good fight. I think the one I would be interested in is Jake Paul against uh, KSI, but we'll see. Hey, Eddie. Jonathan here from Pro Boxing Fans. Hey, mate. Uh What's your understanding of the situation with the WBO? Have you had any conversations with the pre president about what's going to happen with this USIP mandatory? Yeah, I spoke to Paco Valcazar um, actually uh, about an hour ago. Um, get on very well with Paco. Now, they're in a difficult position because obviously they're desperate to be a part of this fight, but they also have an obligation to Alexander Usyk that he is mandatory. So... In an ideal world for the WBO, um, he would, you know, in some way, Usyk needs to be happy with the resolution and the situation. 
So, but at the same time, you know, I said that if there was no belts on the line in this fight, it would still take place and it would still be the biggest fight in boxing. Um, so, you know, it's a tough one for Paco because he really wants to be a part of it, but you can't just ignore people's mandatory obligations at the same time. So myself, Bob, Alex Krasuk, Igis Klimas, you know, all the parties involved, Alexander Usyk, will have to come up with some kind of solution that would keep him happy or vacate the belt. Thank you. J.R. Bell next, please. Hello there, Eddie. Um, just uh, talking about our last conversation before the Jacobs fight, where we were talking about the events that you were putting up. Um, I had to just uh, ask this question. How relieved would you be after December 20th, mm -hmm. after all of the events that you put up this year are done? Well, I think um, the answer is very relieved, but it's really because of the close that we've had. You know, we've had so many fights, so many great fights, so many, I mean, there's been a couple of average fights thrown in there as well. You can't predict what's going to happen in the ring, but the, the finish to the year is always very important. And so is the start to the year. And I feel like we've not finished as strong as this in any year I've been promoting boxing, you know, with AJ against Pulev, with Gennady against Zerometa, and then Canelo against Smith. You know, in the middle of a pandemic, it really is, you know, a, a tribute to uh, the work of Matchroom and the team that we have on both sides of the Atlantic and also our broadcast partners as well. You know, zone. I love the fact that, you know, what was it, probably four months ago, all these guys in, sitting at home, you know, these these hardcore fans that want to talk about the demise of DAZN. Apparently, they're going out of business. They're pulling out of boxing, you know, and then they launch a global product and actually are more aggressive than they've ever been, you know, have a better schedule to close the year than they've ever had before. And I really feel that, obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of, of DAZN in the US, but when you look at the schedule that you're providing, you know, you've just had three back-to-back pay-per-views really over the three months. You know, you had Charlo, you had um, Javante against Santa Cruz and you had Spence against Garcia. You're talking about 230 bucks, right? For those three nights. You're about to have Anthony Joshua, Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez across one week. You know, and for ninety nine ninety nine, you get an entire year on the zone, and the value for the global customer now is, is is unbelievable. So, we're really happy with how we're closing the year. We're really happy how, um, you know how how well we've worked in the environment. It's been very very difficult, very challenging, but also very re rewarding. And of course, you know, there's so much more drama to come this weekend. Gennady is in his record breaking defence. You know, he has a tough undefeated challenger in Zerometa. And of course, the day after is Canelo against Callum Smith. And obviously, everybody's looking towards the two winners of those fights. I'm a little bit biased because obviously Callum Smith's my guy. Um, but I know from a DAZN perspective, the reason they're putting these two together, uh, you know, on the same weekend is to build to that third mega fight. Thank you. Hands next, please. Hey, Eddie, how you doing, man? Good, Hans. Um, so, yeah, I just want to ask you straight up, man. Um, do you believe that Triple G is still the best 160-pounder in the world? Or do you kind of have somebody like a Jamal Charlo? Um, I guess you could throw Canelo in there. Um, but, yeah, do you still have Triple G as the number one in the world? Or is it kind of a toss-up? And, like, who do you have? I, I kind of think that we're, you know, boxing fans, of which I'm one of them, we're very dismissive, aren't we, after even anything that's not a grade A performance and, you know, it, it, we start questioning people. I mean, Gennady Golovkin had two tremendous fights with Canelo Alvarez, you know, two fights that a lot of people thought that he won. Some people thought that Canelo won. You know, some people thought it was a draw, but unquestionably, they were tremendous fights. You know, he came back um, with, with a relatively straightforward fight against Steve Jobs. Um not Steve Jobs, there's a guy from... Steve Rose. Steve Rose. Yeah, I was going to say, don't want to fight Steve Jobs. Blimey, that'd be interesting. Um, you know, and against Steve Rose. And from there, you know, he had what was can only be described again as a tremendous fight with, uh, with Derevenchenko. And it was only because the Derevenchenko fight was close that people start questioning now, okay, 
you know, is Gennady at the latter end of his career? I think no. You know, I think he was going through a little bit of a transitional period with Jonathan Banks as well. Um, I do expect him to put in a, a destructive uh, display against against Zerometa. I believe he's going to win the fight by knockout. And I think he's extremely motivated to go on and, and fight anybody. I mean, you know, the pleasure of working with Gennady Golovkin is he'll never turn his back down at an opportunity or a challenge. And I think when you look at the division at the moment, you know, you know how highly I think of Demetrius Andre. You know, he needs that, that standout fight. Charlo is a great champion as well. And then you've got Gennady Golovkin. You know, you've got other guys in the mix as well, Jaime Mungia. But I think that with Gennady, Gennady, and I will say this as well, you know, I know that he's laser focused on this weekend. And when, when, we, when he does join us, he don't want to talk about Canelo Alvarez, you know, and I want to, want to try and avoid those questions if possible, because the same as Anthony Joshua last week, of course, I will tell you, in my opinion, the ultimate challenge that he wants to accept next, I believe, is, is Canelo Alvarez. But he's just focused on Zerometa. I believe his resume, you know, stands as the best middleweight in the world right now. And by the way, he will fight Charlo. He will fight Mungia and he will fight Andrade. Andre. Um, if the Canelo Alvarez fight doesn't present himself itself. But a lot has got to happen this weekend for that to be the case. But, you know, pound for pound, you have to say, I think he's still the most exciting fighter on the planet. Um, okay, just, just want to quickly follow that up. Um, <clears throat> that's a great answer. But, and I, I know he does have the best resume at 160 pounds. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like when, when people talk about Pacquiao. Pacquiao has the best resume at 147 pounds, but they don't really consider him the best. But do you believe that he's the best at 160 pounds? I don't really want to twist your arm or nothing like that, you know. But yes, I would, I, would, I would say with everything that he's achieved, with his resume, with his performances, I would have to say yes. You know, again, you know how highly I rate Demetrius Andre. And not for no thought of Demetrius's, he hasn't been able to get the standout marquee names on his resume to maybe say that I am on paper the number one middleweight in the world. So, you know, whilst he may be, you have to say that with everything Gennady's achieved, with everything he's shown, and the ability that I still think he has, yes, you have to put him as the number one 160-pounder in the world. And just my last thing for you, um, you said if he doesn't get the Canelo fight, you will fight um, Charlo, Andrade, um, stuff like that. But, you know, a lot of people believe that he probably will get the Canelo fight, um, most likely anyways, don't really know. But, you know, win or lose, if he does get that fight, he typically fights twice a year. Um, let's say he fights Canelo, he beats him, loses, whatever. Is he is the angle still going to be to fight either Charlo or Andrade? Because that is, you know, that's the fight. Yeah, I mean, I think um, with Canelo Alvarez, if he beats Callum Smith, you don't know where the weight division lays. I don't personally see Canelo Alvarez coming back to 160. So, you know, would, would Triple G move to 168 to fight him? I mean, there's so many questions to answer. All I can tell you, honestly, is that you know, there's a list of fighters that I know he wants to fight. And, you know, they do include all the names that you've suggested, but he's got to get through Friday night first. And then, you know, for me, I'm hoping for a Callum Smith victory. If that doesn't happen, yes. you know that every every broadcaster that, that would be working with them and, and certainly DAZN and the fans would push for number three first. And then what happens after that, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Danny uh, Flexon next, please. Hey, Eddie. How you doing? Hey, Danny, you right, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Um, what impressed you the most about AJ's performance at the weekend? And where do you see his stylistic advantages over Fury should that fight get made next? I just think he's really learning and becoming clever, uh, adapting to the opponent that's in front of him. You know, you saw in the Ruiz uh, 2 fight that he adapted an approach that was absolutely perfect to deal with Andy Ruiz. On Saturday, he adapted an approach that was very, very effective to beat Kubrat Pulev. I think it's mad that people, you know, oh, he could have, you know, he could have made it easier and just gone out there like a wrecking ball and destroyed him in the fourth or fifth round. It's like, yeah, but he also boxed his ear holes off and took his time, broke him down and, and battered him, you know, and, and, and produced one of the sensational knockouts of the year. So you can't really win, you know, Oh, I so saw someone say he looked a bit vulnerable in there. I mean, he got hit twice, I think, in the whole fight. And he's also, people are saying, oh, he's stuck between styles. He's not stuck between styles. He's just realised how to become a very effective heavyweight. 
you know, before the fight, oh, do you think he'll still be as exciting? Ask anyone in that arena or watched on TV, was that exciting? You know, when he lets his hands go, when he realises he has a fight to hurt, he is one of the best fighters in the world to watch. And he's becoming a fantastic heavyweight. Great variation with a jab, great feet. He can lock you up on the inside. He can beat you up on the inside. He can box you at range. And he hasn't boxed for a year. So I thought it was an outstanding performance, to be honest with you. He got a very, very motivated Kubrat Pulev. You saw how tough he was. So I think his style will adapt to what's in front of him. I do think against Tyson Fury, he'll be more aggressive because I don't think you want to fiddle around with Tyson Fury and let him play his game of, you know, pouring you and frustrating you. He's got to use his physical attributes in that fight. He's got to get on the inside and he's got to try and beat him up. And he's got to land some of the shots that he landed on Kubrat Pulev. So I just think that it's not really a style that he's adapting now. He's just using the most efficient way to beat what's in front of him. And, you know, if that means going in like a wrecking ball against Tyson Fury, he will do that. But people are still, under, people are still um, disregarding his boxing ability. You know, we saw it against Andy Ruiz. We saw it again against Kubrat Pulev. He's not really getting the, the credit for that, I think, you know. But I thought it was a great performance. I thought it was a really well-rounded, mature performance that was a bit of everything. Thanks, Eddie. OK, unfortunately, we're going to have to bring um, Gennady's call time a bit earlier now. Um, so we're going to get Eddie to introduce Gennady um, uh, right now, actually, Eddie, see if you could go ahead and do that, please. He's just had to um, bring his his section of the call uh, forward, I'm afraid, guys. OK, and uh, as we're going to see him pop up on our screens, I presume, uh, as I said, this Friday night. Hello, Gennady. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Hi, Eddie. I'm good. Good, good, well, good. Look well. forward to seeing you. Uh, I fly tomorrow, so I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And, Sounds good. Uh, looking forward to a very important night this Friday live on the zone. Gennady Golovkin will make the 21st record-breaking defense of his middleweight world championship against Zerometa, undefeated Polish mandatory challenger at the Hard Rock in Florida. Very, very excited. And um, we're going to pass to the floor for a few questions shortly. But firstly, Gennady, you look in great shape. You're like you're like uh, Benjamin Button. You look younger all, every time I see you. <laughs> you know, uh, you look great, feeling good. Had a good camp, and I feel great. Guys, we're going to go to the floor for questions, please. It's not working. Pardon me, sorry, Mar uh, Marshall, with the first question, please. Hey, Gennady, how you doing? Uh, good. 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 So. So with the COVID restrictions and everywhere and all over the place, how was camp for you? Was it easy to get sparring? How, how was that for you? Can I speak Russian, yeah? Yes, please. Well, in principle, было достаточно много времени адаптироваться COVID, то есть к такому событию, что происходит в этом году и в принципе, благодаря своей команде мы смогли найти себе и тренировочный кемп, пройти его успешно, и благодаря тем людям, кто меня поддерживает, мы смогли хорошо подготовиться. Um, um, yes, indeed. Uh, but we had enough time to adapt uh, to the COVID situation this year. And uh, thanks to my team, uh, we were able to organize the training camp and uh, get ready for the fight. Okay. And and being prepared for the fight, did 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 he have to do anything special in preparation for this opponent in in sparring, or is just general? В принципе да, в принципе готовились по общему. Опять же немножко работали больше над различными спектрами, над другими. Ну работа в принципе была всегда. Такая трудовая, сильная, умная, так что я себя чувствую великолепно. Думаю, что мы готовы хорошо. Yes, it was more of a general training, and at the same time, I tried to broaden my scope, and uh, an, a special emphasis was uh, made on power training, and I feel that uh, I'm ready uh, for this fight. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, Marshall. 
Uh, Dan Raphael, please. Oh, thank you very much, Anthony. Hello, everybody. Eddie, good to see you. Gennady, it's nice to talk to you. How have you been? Glad to, uh, glad to be on here with you. Um, my question for you is, this fight against uh, Zermeda has been a long time coming for you. I know it was supposed to be back in the spring, and I just wondered if you could describe if there's been any frustration in getting to the point where you knew you had a date and everything was set because there was a long period of time where I know your team was working hard with the zone and with Eddie to try to get this situated um, while they were also ironing out the remainder of their calendar. Ну да, с каждым, с каждым э, приближением к бою все больше и больше начинало вериться в то, что действительно этот бой случится. Действительно этот бой хотелось и ожидалось с начала года, так что все это тянулось, затянулось. А много было вещей, которые нам не давали сделать этот бой. Я, я рад тому, что этот бой действительно будет и он пройдет в эту пятницу. Я хочу поблагодарить всех и Мальшума, и Дозон за организацию этого боя, что мы сейчас все готовы. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, but um, when we, uh, as we approached to this fight, the more faith I had that this fight will indeed take place. Uh, of course, I would want, would have wanted for this high, for this fight to take place uh, in the beginning of this uh, year but uh i would like to use this opportunity to thank everyone involved matchroom the zone uh my team uh to make this possible and i'm really happy that uh indeed this coming friday this fight will take place can i just uh, ask one follow-up anthony if that's okay fire away and I, I know gennady that you're very happy that it's finally set but I know there, there was, you know, on the business side, I know you're excited to be back in the ring because that's, you know, you're a championship boxer, but I know that on the business side, it was complicated. There was a lot of conversation that DAZN was trying to redo deals and change money and all that kind of stuff. Can you speak to, uh, from the businessman, Gennady Golovkin, uh, what that was like to deal with as you were trying also to prepare for a fight? Dan, I will answer that question. I know that uh, Gennady wants to focus just on, on the fight and, uh, I think he believes that he's uh, happy with the situation and he will address everything moving forward following this weekend, but we focus on the fight on Saturday. Okay, not really an answer, but thank you. <laughs> Friday. Friday. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dan. And uh, Ames next, please. Ames here for Boxing News TV. Gennady, you're coming up to a history-making fight. First of all, congratulations. And you've had some amazing fights along the way. What I want to know is, of the fights that could have been made but weren't because fighters avoided you, which fight did you wish was made and why? Да, я я рад, я рад, да, что вы все-таки упоминаете, что для меня это, это исторический бой. Да, я думаю, что в будущем многие люди все равно это будут понимать и осознают, что это действительно для среднего веса будет такой исторический бой. И хотелось бы его провести действительно раньше. Отвечая на ваш вопрос, я бы, наверное, сказал бы, что каждый сильный, каждый спортсмен, каждый соперник, тот, кто отклонялся от боя, был на свое, в свое время силен, был в топе и действительно чем-то выделялся. Я думаю, что все... В тот момент мне интересно противостояние было, знаете, наверное, я скажу, наверное, о Келли Павлике. Келли Павлик мне очень сильно симпатизировал в то время, когда мы все примерно начинали и восходили, ну, то есть поднимались. Я думаю, это Келли Павлик. Thank you very much for uh, calling this fight historic. I believe that uh, with time, people will realize that uh, this coming Friday, uh, the fight will indeed be a historic fight for the middleweight division. And uh, I should uh, also say that I wish it would have taken place earlier. Uh, answering your question, I believe that every opponent that I met uh, with was a strong opponent was at the top at the time. And uh, speaking about the boxers, I would mention Kelly Public. Uh, Kelly Public was a boxer we were all, uh, uh, were all uh, look, looking okay. for. That's it. Yeah, can you hear them? And 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, this is uh, some something uh, that uh, we've been all uh, looking up to. So that's the bo box that I would mention, Kelly Public. Thank you. Carlos, next, please. Hi, Gennady. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, you, you mentioned this being a historic fight for your career as a middleweight champion. In your opinion, you know, you've done just about everything that can be done in your career as a middleweight. But do you personally feel that there is still some things that you feel like you can still accomplish at 160 pounds? Чтобы достигнуть своего желания, надо победить в пятницу вечером. После того, как пройдет этот бой, мы будем уже разговаривать о том, что мне стоит еще достигнуть. I have not achieved everything that I wanted to, to achieve. Uh, I first need to, to win on Friday. And after that, uh, I will start looking into other opportunities uh, and uh, other options that uh, I need to look into in order to do, uh, have more achievements in my career. Mm -hmm. Just a quick follow-up, you know, this is going to be obviously your first in one fight of 2020. You've been accustomed to fighting multiple times for, throughout your career, especially, you know, twice a year in the last few years. Is the a goal to maybe get at least two fights in for 2021? Yeah. yeah. Я надеюсь, но все же связано с пандемией. Я рад, то, что все налаживается, что все становится лучше, яснее. И многие были в такой ситуации, многие проявили всего лишь по одному бою после мировой паузы. Так что я думаю, что все наладится и будет гораздо больше. Yes, I do hope uh, to have more fights uh, during the year, but uh, it's obviously uh, was caused by uh the pandemic and uh, I'm not the only one many fighters ended up in this situation when they only had just uh, one fight during the this year uh, but uh, hopefully it's getting better and uh, with time uh, we'll have an opportunity we'll have opportunities to uh, fight more thank you Cynthia next please hi Gennady how are you hope all is well uh, Cynthia Conte for Ring, Ring TV I know that you've been wanting to fight back home in Kazakhstan. Is that still possibly a plan once this pandemic has lifted and possibly you fought here um, in the States? Has that, is that still on your radar? No, надо понимать, насколько долго у нас будет пандемия еще. То есть, когда она вообще пройдет, насколько будут открыты границы, насколько откроется Казахстан. То есть, ну, это... Желание то всегда есть. Я хотел бы боксировать вообще по всему миру. Я открыт для этого, чтобы боксировать по всему миру. Конечно, конечно, это было бы здорово боксировать в разных странах. Um, speaking about a fight in Kazakhstan, a lot of will depend on how long this pandemic uh, lasts uh, and uh, when will the borders open and. Uh, but I do have this desire and I'm open to uh, participate in fights and boxing all over the world. So I'm looking forward to many fights around the globe. Best of luck to you, Gennady. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Xavier, next, please. What's going on, Chad? How are you feeling out there? Feel great. All right, that's what's up. Uh, okay. First off, we welcome you back. It's been a minute, we miss you. Um, quick question for you as well as Eddie Hearn. With the win this coming next week is the goal to maybe try to get another another fight against um, against Canelo, a third fight against Canelo. And Eddie Hearn, can you share as to what went into a decision with the, choosing the opponent of a guy who's 21 and 0 with five KOs and he has more knockouts than his career? Well, I'll answer that if uh, Gennady's okay with it. I think that all of the focus is on Friday night. Um, everybody got to witness two tremendous fights with Triple G against Canelo, and who knows what the future holds, but all that matters is Friday night as against Zerometa. In terms of the selection of the opponent, when you are a champion, you have to face mandatory defenses. Zerometa is the mandatory defense. He's an undefeated fighter. He's a, 
a very good fighter that's ready for the challenge and he's very hungry. And all of these guys rise to the occasion when they fight a great fighter. It doesn't matter if it's Joshua, doesn't matter if it's Triple G, Canelo, all of these guys rise to the occasion because the victory against someone like Gennady Golovkin would be the ultimate achievement for Zerometa in his country, in Poland, and everybody back home. So for the Canelo staff and everything, that's the future. What matters is Friday night, defend his title, make a record-breaking defence, and uh, get business taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua Brewer, next, please. Hello, Gennady. So we haven't seen you in a while. You look good. Uh, and I know we've shared things about the opponent and all, but just from your perspective, when you come into this fight, uh, what are your intentions? Can we expect a big drama show for this fight? Do y'all hear that? Constantine uh, has just frozen, I believe. His translator. One sec, give him a second. Okay, I think he's logging back on now. Anthony, have we lost the uh, translator there? Yeah, I'm just checking on the uh, status have, of those guys. Have, sorry. We, not, have we not? We lost Gennady as well. Have we? Yeah, I believe we have. They may, their, their internet may have dropped as they're in, in joining guys, us. Guys, if you want to run a question for me while we're waiting, I'd rather so you can uh, keep busy. If you've got anything you want to ask me. Yeah, hey, uh, Eddie, this is uh, Joshua. I did have a question for you. I wanted to ask uh, as far as uh, Demetrius Andre, I know he was uh, scheduled to fight Dusty Harrison and then that fell out. <laughs> Is uh, there a plan for who he may face next? And also, I know there's big implications on, of course, Triple G and Canelo potentially facing off. But should that not work out, is Andre willing to move to 168 if he can get that Canelo fight? Yeah, I think, to be honest with you, like, Demetrius is just desperate for a big fight. Desperate for a big fight, you know. And uh, it's very difficult when, you know, you got guys like Charlo saying, all I want to do is unify and I want to do what my brother did. And and I'm reaching out to those guys saying, look, you know, we, we've made you huge offers to fight on DAZN. We know that might be difficult for you. We'll do the fight on, on Fox. And, you know, Demetrius will probably cost you less money than Derevenchenko. You say you want to unify. Here's, here's the fight for you. Um, Demetrius has always struggled with people not really wanting to fight him. I believe Gennady would fight him. Um, is there a fight? You know, the one thing that Demetrius has at the moment is a world championship belt. And if he didn't have that belt, it'd be even more difficult to get him a fight. But Billy Joe Saunders is in a very similar position. And I do believe that if Demetrius Andre doesn't get um, a, uh, a Canelo Alvarez or a Triple G, I'm almost certain that he will fight Billy Joe Saunders at 168 pounds in his next fight. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, uh, BTG next, please. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Good, mate. Um, I want to ask you about the weekend. How did it feel getting, and obviously we had limited capacity with a thousand fans, but did it sort of feel like things were sort of almost back to normal? Obviously with Sweet Caroline playing and, the crowd singing did it almost feel like we had that big event feel back it did i mean it was a thousand people it felt like twenty thousand people it was amazing just to see people's people smiling you know so happy to be there unfortunately we got the news from the government today that they're putting london and a lot of the southeast into tier three 
which means they've now banned live crowds at events after what a couple of days so we managed to do one um and it was amazing feeling to do it and i think it really helped aj to be honest like he's, he's been to a couple of um fights now with no crowd and it was it was difficult for him you know i think uh I don't know if he would have performed in the same way. So it was a big edge having the fans there and it was great to see them back. When they return again, we have no idea. But we hope that when that's our last UK show now till probably January the 30th. So hopefully um, when we return, we'll have the crowds back again. Cheers, Eddie. Appreciate it. Uh, Declan Taylor, please. Yeah, Eddie, I just wanted to ask if you've spoken to Bob yet today. No, I spoke to him last night. Um, we had a good chat last night and I think we're all, we're all in the same, you know, the same mindset. We all want to make the fight. There's very little to discuss, but still some things to discuss. We think we should try and move forward with contracts as soon as possible. Let the governing bodies know that we have an agreement and then we'll go to market and talk to the various people that have been approaching us about where the fight will take place. Um, don't really, you know, I know that there's the Deontay Wilder situation. Some of you guys will know probably better than me where that's up to in terms of the arbitration for that that rematch clause. I think, to be honest, that's the only thing that will stop this fight from happening next. That's the only hurdle you see at the moment. Yeah, I mean, there are still hurdles, but I don't, I don't see any major hurdles at all. Um, you know, unless both guys want to have an argument about who goes first on the post or who ring walks second or, you know, I don't see that being an issue. But um, I really believe it's going to move swiftly and hopefully we can get something on paper before the end of the year. Cheers, Eddie. And with that note, I see Mr. Golovkin has returned to the Zoom. So back over to Anthony for uh, some more questions. OK, uh, Gail Falkenfell, please. Thank you very much. Gennady, you mentioned this fight being extremely important to you. Would you say because of the record, it might be one of the most important fights of your entire career? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Это очень важный мой для меня действительно, потому что он рекордный. И я считаю так, что рекорд, установить, побить рекорд, это всегда приятно, это всегда важно для любого атлета. То есть ну, мы не говорим там, какая-то будет 21, 25, 30, без разницы какая, если ты бьешь рекорд, то это уже это приятно, это радует. Yes, indeed, it is a very important fight because it's a record defense. And I believe uh, it is very exciting for any athlete uh, to set a new record. And it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's 21st defense or some other number. It's just uh, the fact that you are setting a record uh, is uh, something that uh, pleases you. And is there any urgency to put on a good performance given that you had a very difficult fight in your last fight. Конечно, к каждому бою, я к каждому бою подхожу очень серьёзно и я осознаю, что это профессиональный бокс и в этом виде спорта есть свои последствия и чем легче будет для меня бой, тем лучше, но Тот уровень оппонентов, тот уровень, на котором ты находишься в качестве чемпиона, то есть он тебе не дает легких боев. Надеюсь, я каждый раз надеюсь, что мне будет легче. Um, of course, uh, I treat every uh, fight very seriously. Uh, and uh, at this level, there are no easy fights. Uh, when you're a champion, uh, you realize that uh, every... Um, like opponent uh, brings certain uh, challenges. And I uh, take training very seriously. And I hope uh, that uh, the more uh, I train, the easier it will be for me during the fight. Uh, 
Uh, Pro Bees, please, next. Thank you. Hi, Gennady. How you doing, mate? Good. Gennady, I need to ask you, there's uh, an opinion out there that you've show, shown signs of vulnerability against the likes of Steve Rolls and Derachenko. Derachenko. Are you still uh, a prime Gennady Golovkin? Не, тяжело рассказать, как, как сказать мне, как атлету, сказать на пике. Вы знаете, как бы ту скорость, которую я показываю в зале, ту силу, физическую подготовность, ту выносливость, которая у меня есть, и я демонстрирую ее на спаррингах в зале, то есть она ничем не хуже, чем тогда, когда она была, например, даже 5 лет назад. Даже я где-то считаю, что сейчас я стал посильнее, потому что ряд таких вещей, как Тренер по физподготовке я поменял. То есть я взял себе тренера по физподготовке. Я чувствую, наоборот, я стал сильнее и более опытным. Я, наоборот, думаю, что я потихоньку-потихоньку преображаюсь as strong, as powerful, uh, as tenacious, uh, have a lot of as stamina as I had, for example, five years ago, if uh, maybe even even better. And uh, I did introduce certain changes uh, into my training. I have a new trainer for physical uh, training. So, and uh, there have been some changes made uh, to uh, my training. Thank you. Viper Sport next, please. Hi, Gennady. How are you doing? Yes. Good to, good to see you back in the ring, man. I'm really excited for Saturday. Uh, listen, the boxing world is going crazy. We've been seeing some, you know, crazy fights, um, crazy matchups, and also some unexpected matchups as well, like exhibitions and stuff like that. Uh, I want to take your opinion on um, Mr. Floyd Mayweather making a return to the ring, fighting a YouTuber. And is this something that boxing com boxing's coming to? Could we ever see you in the ring for an exhibition against some sort of celebrity? Ну, вы знаете, это же все дело предложения, все дело спроса. То есть это, конечно, то, что делают эти бои коммерческие, они притягивают зрителей. То есть, конечно, это было бы интересно. И я, в принципе, открыт к такому. Было бы интересно um, of course, it will depend on demand for those type of fights. Uh, they are very attractive and from the commercial point of view uh, as well. And I believe that I would be open to an opportunity like that. Damn, so uh, Gennady Golovkin against Logan Paul 2022. Who knows? <laughs> All the best on Saturday. Nobody knows. Great, thank you. And the final question for Gennady. Thank you so much for joining us, Gennady. And, the, and your last question comes from Cornerman, please. Hey, how you doing, champ? Good, good. So, champ, as we know, every time you bring a big drama show, the environment is one of the craziest in boxing, the way all the fans get. Do you feel not having the fans there for this match could affect your performance at all without having their energy there? Uh, you know, yeah, definitely, I wanted to give you те эмоции, сделать праздник из своего вечера, то есть сделать максимально, чтобы фанаты бокса получили наслаждение от моего вечера, от моего выступления. И многими вещами я даже, как бы сказать так, жертвовал, чтобы больше зрителей получило больше удовольствия. В данный момент сейчас новая ситуация, мы к ней подстраиваемся. Я действительно видел пару вечеров, где проводилось без зрителей, но я скажу так, что как бы там ни было, сделана замечательная работа, мы, я думаю, что все смогли потихоньку уже перестраиваться, немножко осознать, понять, что мы находимся в такой ситуации. Я хотел бы подчеркнуть и выделить замечательную работу это Мэтшум, это Эдди Херн, то есть все его команды, то есть это Дозон, как они сейчас делают, на каком они уровне в, в нынешней ситуации проводят вечера, это просто замечательно. 
Um, yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, I've always uh, like wanted to, to be as many fans uh, uh, to be present at the fights as, as possible. And uh, people know that from time to time, I even uh, made certain steps uh, for more people to see uh, the fights. Uh, but it's new a reality right now. And uh, we had to adjust uh, to the situation where we need to fight uh, with no crowd present. At the same time, I should say that a, gra a great job uh, has been done uh, for us uh, to adjust to this. And I would like to once again to congratulate uh, Matchbox and Eddie Hearn uh, on his uh, efforts and efforts of his team as well as the zone, uh, the level of organization of those fights. And I did see uh, already several fights uh, with no crowd uh, is uh, excellent. And uh, uh, I'm really grateful for, uh, for them to be part of this. All right, champ. Thank you so much. Wish you the best Saturday night going forward. Any time, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. And that's um, that's Gennady's time for today. So thank you all for joining. We still have some more people left, of course, but um, I don't know whether Eddie wants to have some final words to uh, before he sees Gennady tomorrow. Yeah, just want to say, uh, Gennady, thank you for your time. We'll see you tomorrow. We look forward to Friday night live on Design. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Oops. Thanks so much, guys. So now we're going to bring in a uh, an, another. Um, we're going to bring in our next guest. Sorry, we're bringing in Ali Akhmadov now. We're, and, uh, we're going to keep Constantine on the line, uh, who's doing a fabulous job. Thank you so much. Um, Ali obviously fights for the vacant fights for the vacant strap on uh, Friday evening, and here he is, looking very, very mean. I would not want to go anywhere near this gentleman in any kind of circumstances. <laughs> Um, guys, the first question will be coming from Andreas, please. Hi, Ali. How are you doing? Hello. And I uh, have a question. Um, do you involve with um, special sparring spot for sport, a southpaw position in your training camp? Um, I'm sorry, Andreas, uh, we are, uh, have some tef technical difficulties. I'm uh, interpreting simultaneously and just interpreted okay. for Gennady uh, the questions. We just need some time to give Ali, uh, like, connect uh, for me so I could interpret your questions simultaneously. Just just give me one second. We we figuring this right. out. Mm, yeah, let's just make this one. Алло. Да, вот сейчас я вас слышу. Да, а остальных хотел бы услышать. Окей, Андреас, please go ahead with your question once again and I uh, will interpret for for Ali. Thank you. Hi Ali, how are you doing? I have a question. Um, do you involve it involve with uh, special sparring partners for South Pole position? It's a very, very important fight for you for the next big step. Да, я приветствую Андреса. Да, конечно, я спринивал с боксером его сторонней стойки. Мы проделали хорошую работу, хорошую подготовку. Были очень хорошие старые партнеры ребята. Я готов. Uh, yes, uh, good to see you, Andreas. Uh, indeed, uh, I had very good sparring and I had uh, several uh, Southpaw uh, uh, sparring partners and we had a great training and I felt ready for the fight. Thank you very much. Good of, good of luck. Okay, all the best. Спасибо, спасибо большое. Thanks a lot. Uh, JR Bell next, please. Greetings there, Ali. How are you doing? Здравствуйте. Спасибо. Все хорошо. Все отлично. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. 
All right, one question here. Uh, seeing that this fight is for the vacant IBO title at super middleweight and you are a rising contender in the WBC, what are you looking to accomplish here in this fight and then going into 2021? Uh, я не могу сейчас понял вопрос, на самом деле, еще раз. Да. Ну, сейчас я полностью сфокусирован на своем бою. Мне представилась большая возможность боксировать за звание чемпиона мира. И сейчас все поставлено. Весь мой фокус стоит у меня на этот бой. Um... I'm not sure I got your question, but I'm really focused uh, on this fight, uh, and it's a, a great opportunity. I'm uh, grateful for this opportunity to fight for the world title, and uh, I'm concentrated on this fight only. I'm not looking anything beyond, uh, not thinking about 2021. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Ames, next, please. Ames here for Boxing News TV. Pleasure to meet you, Ali. Ali, uh, just could you tell me a bit more about a fighter that we know from these shores? Um, your experience in the amateurs fighting Joshua Boazzi. Could you tell me about that? Uh, Joshua. No, Joshua is a very good boxer. And I think he has большой потенциал, что здесь в профессионалах. Так я не наблюдаю за ним, как он поддерживает профессионалов. Я знаю, что он идет без поражений и он хороший боец. Um, you want me to say a few words about Joshua? Joshua is an excellent fighter uh, with a great potential, and I don't follow his professional career too closely, but I just know that uh, he. Uh, didn't have any losses, and uh, I think uh, he, he's a great fighter. Could you also tell me about how much Gennady Golovkin has really opened doors for the Kazakhstani talents with his rise to the top of the sport? Well, you know, I think that Gennady, on his own example, showed all молодым ребятам, что все возможно. И открыл всем большое желание показать себя и выйти совсем на иной уровень. И показал, что есть куда стремиться и что все возможно. Um, Gennady uh, set an amazing example to all of us uh, young fighters, uh, showing that anything is possible. Uh, and uh, he uh, um, allowed us to uh, get ourselves to the next level and uh, to demonstrate our abilities. Last time out, you took just 44 seconds to beat Andrew Hernandez. Carlos Gongora is meant to be a tougher challenge for you this time around. What are you expecting from him? Ну, знаете, я на в любой бой готовлюсь на всю дистанцию и от боя всегда ожидаю максимум. Но это бокс. В прошлом бою все закончилось быстро. Мы не знаем, что как и что будет в следующем бою. И ставить наперед какие-то планы, как бы я никогда так не делаю. Я выхожу и боксирую. You know, I always get uh, ready for all rounds, <laughs> allotted for a fight, and uh, I apply maximum uh, uh, preparation for, for the fight, maximum training. And uh, indeed, the, the previous fight uh, ended uh, fast, uh, but uh, I do not uh, place any hopes uh, on the next fight. I'm ready, and uh, I'm not thinking about ending it uh, like in a speedy manner. I'm just uh, concentrated on the fight itself. And do you stand to win the version of the world title, the IBO? What does that mean for you if you get your hands on that title? Uh, 
Это будет большой шаг. Это будет большой шаг к моей основной цели. Основная цель стать абсолютным чемпионом, собрать все пояса в своей категории. Uh, it will be a great leap uh, to my uh, ultimate goal. And my ultimate goal is to become the champion of uh, all the federations and organizations to collect all the belts. Uh, my final question for you. Uh, Boxing, as we know, is a young man's game. Triple G is coming towards his, to the end of his career, it seems. And there are a number of Kazakhstani talents coming through yourself. Daniel Yelusinov, Janibek Adam Kanuli, to name a couple who are now showing themselves on the stages of the boxing scenes. When G Triple G finally hangs up the gloves, are you looking to take that flag for yourself as the poster boy for the next generation of Kazakhstani talent? No, знаете, я не хотел бы как-то забегать вперед. Сегодняшний день Геннадий действующий боец, и он еще полон сил, и говорить сейчас о его завершении нет пока смысла. А что касается вашего вопроса, ну, я думаю, что любой боксер рассчитывает максимальная отдача от себя, и что у него все получится. Um, you know, I don't really want to jump the gun and uh, to say that because uh, Gennady is still uh, in the middle of his career and uh, he is strong, he is powerful, he is at the peak, and it just doesn't make sense to discuss uh, the time when he hangs his uh, gloves. And uh, answering your question, I would say that any boxer hopes uh, to achieve as much as possible in his career. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ames. And the final question for Ali comes from Cornerman, please. Hey, how you doing, Ali? So I'm just curious, champ, what's it like to have a GGG as a mentor in your camp? And what's the most important thing you've learned from him so far? You know, Gennady is a big premier. Тренируясь с ним, я набрался много опыта, как и технического, так и ментального, так скажем, боевого опыта. И для меня он большой пример, и я очень рад, что я могу тренироваться рядом с ним долго. Um, Геннадий... Uh is an amazing athlete I look up to. And uh, I'm really grateful for this opportunity uh, to train along with him and to uh, get a lot of, uh, gain a lot of experience, valuable experience, both technical and uh, mental. And uh, it is a pleasure to train with Gennady. All right, thank you, Chan. Wish you the best for Saturday night. Sorry, apolo apologies there to Marshall, please. Um, one more, if you may, Ali, um, from Marshall Brown, thank you. Hey, Ali, how you doing? Science 2.0. Um, I just wanted to know, has any COVID restrictions uh, affected your ability to get good sparring or training? And my second question was, do you have any nagging injuries while you was in training camp that you had to nurse before the fight? Ну, знаете, вот проблем с лагерем, что касаемо ковида, я с таким не столкнулся, потому что моя команда сделала великолепную работу, и были отличные спарринг-партнеры, были великолепные тренировочные условия. Это был, опять же, как и всегда, великолепный тренировочный лагерь, несмотря на такое положение с ковидом. А травм нет, у меня нет никаких травм. Я абсолютно готов и жду не дождусь пятницы. Um, speaking about the COVID situation, uh, no, I did not. Uh 
have any issues uh, with uh, training uh, because uh, my team did a great job and uh, uh, found me exciting sparring partners, uh, excellent conditions uh, during the training. And despite this uh, pandemic, uh, the training cap was excellent. Uh, answering your second question, no, I don't have any nagging traumas and I'm ready for the fight uh, and can't wait. <laughs> Well, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much to um, Ali. And of course, especially to thanks to Constantine for um, his translations for both uh, Gennady and Ali. And uh, best of luck over there this uh, weekend, Ali. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, thank you. We're just waiting for Team Zerometa to uh, join the call. They should not be long. We obviously had to adjust the timing slightly, so it's a little bit earlier than they were told. So if you just bear with us, we're just um, getting hold of his team to join the call. Hey buddy, Biggie, I gotta get over there. Biggie, Biggie. Now there is a sight for sore eyes. I think I see Peter there. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, Camel. Thank you for joining us. I think we're just waiting for uh, Peter from Fight News, who's kindly agreed to uh, yeah. Yeah. translate for us today.
Halo? Jest, Przemek. Przemek jesteś? Peter, do you hear us, mate? Przemek. Just one, two, one, two. Hello, Przemek, jesteś? Słyszysz mnie? Ja jestem, tylko pytanie, gdzie jest reszta? Okej. A nie wiem. A ty mnie słyszysz? Ja, ja Ciebie słyszę, słyszę. Przemku, tak, cześć. Ponownie. To co, zaczynamy? No, czyli, 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 czyli gra muzyka, teraz inni się muszą podłączyć. Nie, właśnie nie, nie wiem, czy już są pytania, czy nie, bo to jest to pytanie. Guys, you want, you want to start with, with, with uh, Kamil Sharmeta right now? You guys ready? Uh, yes, please, Peter. Good to have you on, my friend. Thank you for, so much for doing this, as always. And... Uh, Yes, we will. Uh, we're going to open the floor to questions, but um, let me just see if there's some coming through. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let me just explain to Camille how is how is this thing going to work, and then then I am ready to help you guys. Camille, let some pytania odpowiadać po polsku. Nie przyjmujesz się angielskim, chyba że chcesz pokazać klasę. Nie, nie, nie. Bez ja. Klasę to masz piątek pokazać. Słuchaj i i lecimy z odpowiedziami. Ja ja tłumaczę. Ready? Just tell me when you guys ready, and we're gonna start with Camille. Okay, great. So, um, Joshua Brewer, first, please. Hello, Camille. Hopefully, uh, all has been going well for you, training wise, and all of that. What is your mindset going into this fight? Your big, the biggest fight of your career. There are gonna be a lot of people who are likely going to be counting you out in viewing this as a easy fight for a triple G in some regards. What is your mindset when you go into a situation like that? And how do you, at, how do you plan to take advantage of triple G having been in hard fights and having this long layoff? Uh. Pytanie do Ciebie przede wszystkim, jakie masz nastawienie psychiczne przed walką, która przez wielu uważana jest za łatwą walkę dla go w kina i co myślisz na temat tego, by wykorzystać fakt, że tak naprawdę Gołowkin nie był w twardej walce od naprawdę dłuższego czasu? Czyli to jest pytanie do Ciebie. Is it coming around? I lost him. I believe he may be having connectivity issues. I think so. We lost Camille. Oh, he's, he's back now. Yeah. He's back now. So, uh, Camille, you have a Yeah, there is some problem with connectivity. Let me. He's go mute. With it. Uh, he's mute. Camille, you have a question? Ja, on ma... Kamil, słyszysz mnie? Włącz mikrofon. Ok. I'm going to show him a microphone. Ok. Jestem okay, już, now he's fine. <laughs> ok. Jeszcze raz pytanie, bo na pewno nie słyszałeś. Pytanie było, 
pytanie było, czy jakie jest nastawienie psychiczne przed tą walką, wiedząc o tym, że dla zdecydowanej większości to jest bardzo łatwa walka dla gołów w kina i czy masz zamiar wykorzystać fakt, że tak naprawdę Triple G długo nie był w twardej męskiej walce? Przede wszystkim bardzo chciałbym podziękować ekipie Gołowkina za to, że dotrzymała słowa i do walki doszło, bo powiedzieli nam kilka miesięcy temu, że do tej walki dojdzie i dotrzymali słowa. Czekaj, bo tu coś się działo. Ja Okej, okay, wiem, tutaj dzwonili do mnie z tego Messengera. I mnie to nie obchodzi, że, że ja w oczach w większości jestem ja takim, słyszę. takim jestem w oczach większości, że, że to będzie łatwa walka dla gołówkina, ale naprawdę 14 miesięcy ciężko trenowałem, żeby, żeby zajść ze skórę gołówkinowi, zrobić wszystko, żeby jednak wygrać tę walkę i zapisać się w historii polskiego boksu. Uh, first of all, I am. I want to thank you. Say big thanks to uh, Triple G team. A couple of months ago, he promised me this fight is going to happen, and this fight is going to happen. And I am not really paying any attention whatsoever to what people are talking about uh, during the last 14 months. This is when the fight was actually announced for people who don't know uh, for the first time. I was. I was doing absolutely everything what I could to be best prepared for whatever Golovkin is going to bring uh, to the ring. Right, corner man next, please. Hey, how you doing, Camille? So as we know, you're an undefeated fighter. Now you're Are getting we the... in line? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Oh, so... Now, as we know, you're an undefeated fighter. You're getting the biggest opportunity of your career. How how hard has it been to prepare for this moment, dealing with, with the pandemic going on? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so uh, how hard has it been for him uh, going into the biggest moment of his career, you know, and how hard has it been preparing for this moment, dealing with the with the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic? A Kamil, to jest najważniejsza walka twojego życia. Jak trudno było przygotować się na tak ważną walkę w twoim życiu? Halo, Przemek. I heard you. I heard you. For some reason, we have those repeaters to me. Uh, I'm reading you guys. But uh, Kamil, pytanie było przede wszystkim najważniejsza walka tego życia. Trzeba się przygotować na nią podczas pandemii. Jak do tego podszedł? Wiadomo, że to jest najważniejsza walka w moim życiu, najważniejsza walka w mojej dotychczasowej karierze. Dlatego to było też motywacją dla mnie móc zawalczyć z takim mistrzem, jakim jest bez wątpienia Gennady Gołowkin. Wiadomo, że była pandemia i dalej jest ta pandemia, ale ja naprawdę miałem świetne warunki do trenowania i nie opuściłem jednego treningu przez tą pandemię. Robiłem w 100% to, co trener chciał i to wykonywaliśmy. Uh, from the day one, and this is why I don't pay attention to whatever whatever was was Przemku, halo, cześć. 
I co? Odpowiedziałeś? Ja, ja, ja cię słyszę, ja już powiedziałem. A, powiedziałeś, słyszę. tak, bo mi się to zacięło. Uh, I'm not sure if he answered that, but lastly, I'd like to know. Uh, Cały what, czas się zacina, u mnie to samo jest. What, what does he want the world to find out about him on Saturday night? Uh, pytanie dodatkowe. Uh, jakiego Kamila Szeremetę chcesz pokazać światu uh, w piątek wieczorem? Najlepsza wersja Kamila Szeremety, jak, jaka jeszcze, jeszcze nie była widoczna przez dotychczasową karierę. Yy, miałem naprawdę dużo czasu na rozpracowanie gołowkina i na poprawę swoich błędów, a na wykorzystanie błędów gołowkina. Nie chcę za dużo gadać, yy, wolę tą energię przeznaczyć na, na, na walkę. I want to show the best possible version of, of, uh, of Kamil Sheremeta. I have really enough time to be myself the best and to find out what the weaknesses of Triple G's are. I don't want to talk too much. Uh, it's not me. I just want to concentrate my energy uh, for what I'm going to show you guys on Friday in the ring. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I wish you the best for, yes, correct, thank Friday you. night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ames, next question, please. Ames here for Boxing News TV. A pleasure to meet you, Camille. Uh, Hello. Camille, there, there are some in the boxing world that believe Triple G has shown signs that he isn't the same Triple G we used to see. Do you believe this is the best time to inflict a defeat on Golovkin now? Uh, jest wielu takich, którzy uważają, że to już nie jest ten sam Golovkin, który był kiedy, kiedyś. Czy uważa, że właśnie teraz jest idealna żeby go zranić, go pokonać. To znaczy wiadomo, że no czasu nie cofniesz, tak? La, lata, lata nie cofniesz, tak? Gołowkin już jest coraz starszym zawodnikiem, już na pewno ten najlepszy prime ma za sobą, a ja dopiero wchodzę w ten najlepszy prime. Gołowki na pewno jest najlepszym zawodnikiem, z jakim miałem do czynienia, tak? I jeszcze z takim zawodnikiem nie miałem. Dalej jest to niebezpieczny zawodnik, z który z każdej ręki może znokautować. Jest dalej świetnym mistrzem i szacunek dla niego za to wszystko. You cannot, uh, you cannot defeat time. We know that. Uh, we know his prime is behind right now, but he's still extremely uh, dangerous fighter, and I have to remember this uh, uh, all the time. The, the betting gods have you coming in as a heavy underdog. Are you happy with that tag, and do you believe you're being overlooked by the fans? A, jesteś w tej walce uważany za underdoga, a, bookmacherzy nie dają ci większych szans, a, czy masz z tym problem, czy nie? Zdecydowanie nie mam, to są tylko bookmacherzy. Najważniejsze, że ja sam w siebie wierzę, ja, na mnie nie ma presji, tak? ja nic nie muszę, ewentualnie mogę, to na gołówki nie jest presja. Ja wchodzę do ringu i we, we, ja wejdę do ringu, ja wejdę do ringu bez żadnego stresu. There is no pressure on me. Pay attention. Uh what bookies are saying, what the uh, predictions are. I'm just going into the ring to, to beat him. Thank you, Ames. And Deck Taylor next, please. Hi, Kamil. Thanks for your time. Hello. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, if you could tell us a little bit about your background and why you started boxing in the first place. Um, 
um you know what what brought you here uh how you know how long what what age were you when you first walked in the gym and uh and all things like that if you wouldn't mind Kamil, jesteś? Jestem, jestem. No, jestem, jestem. Kamil? No, jestem, jestem, Przemku. For some reason I don't see Kamil. Jesteś? Jestem. Pytanie poleciało. Jak, jak rozpoczęła się twoja kariera pięściarska i co spowodowało, że zostałeś pięściarzem? Wiesz co, to była taka dziwna historia, bo ja na wcześniej trenowałem piłkę nożną, ale po jakimś czasie... Pytanko poleciało, słyszysz mnie? Słyszę cię. Ja zacząłem trenować ogólnie w, w piłkę nożną, ale po, jakimś ale po jakimś czasie to trenowanie piłki nożnej nie sprawiało mi przyjemności. Bardziej sprawiała mi przyjemność yy, bicie się między przerwami albo w czasie przerw yy, z innymi zawodnikami. I to mnie jakoś tak nakłoniło do, do pójścia na trening. Pierwszy trening yy, z, yy, zacząłem jak miałem 12 lat po obejrzeniu yy, także Rokiego. Już nie pamiętam, która część. Uh, I started I started as a soccer player, but uh, just happened this way that a lot of people are, are saying, uh, was was telling me that I, maybe I should start start boxing, and I'm not gonna lie, one of the reasons why I decided to go into the boxing was uh, what. Watching Rocky, Rocky Part 3, część trzecia. A już nie pamiętam nad która część. Kamil, słyszysz mnie? Słyszę cię, nie pamiętam która część. Oh, he doesn't remember, but, but, uh, but Rocky, Rocky definitely... Rocky. That was motywował the, one of the reasons he decided to to be a fighter. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Marshall next. Okay. Hey, hey, Camille, how you doing? Boxing Hello. Sweet Science, Mar Marshall Hello. Brown. Um, first of all, I like. I want to commend you on. I see your demeanor. You seem real relaxed. You don't seem like you. You're uptight. I like that. Um, what's your confidence level from a one to ten in this fight? Thank you. Przed tą walką w skali od jeden do dziesięciu. Co, co, co w skali jeden do dziesięciu? Przemku. Przemo. Mógłbyś powtórzyć? Powiedz mi, bo ja, ja cię nie słyszałem. Co w skali od jednego do dziesięciu? Ja Cię słyszę, mógłbyś powtórzyć tą walką. Powie, za, zadaj mi pytanie, bo ja nie słyszałem pytania. O, o 
Okej, okay, pytanie, pytanie brzmi w skali od 1 do 10, jak pewny, jaką masz pewność siebie przed walką z Triple G? Słuchaj, na chwilę obecną skala od 1 do 10 to jest 10. A i tak teraz to jest takie jakby śmieciowe gadanie, bo nieważne co jest yy, i co czuję teraz, Jak ważne będzie, co będę, co będę, co no będę czuć idea. podczas walki. To będzie najważniejsze. A to powiem wam dopiero w, po walce ewentualnie. Nie? Najważniejszy i tak jest czas walki, a nie teraz. Teraz jest wszystko dobrze. Jest motywacja, wszystko. Skala od 1 do 10. It doesn't matter. I mean, uh, everything is gonna it's gonna happen in the ring. Not no, nothing is gonna happen here when we are talk about it. It, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, we all know uh, how those things works. But for now, uh, my confidence level is at ten. Okay. The second question is, how would this win over Triple G change his life? W jaki sposób walka wygrana z Triple G zmieniłaby twoje życie? Przede wszystkim ja walczę po to, żeby zapisać się w historii polskiego boksu, bo w Polsce nie było jeszcze mistrza świata kategorii średniej zawodowców. To po pierwsze, a po drugie ja walczę dla swojej rodziny, dla lepszego bytu z moich dzieci kochanych. Two, two part answer. First of all, this is fight for the history. There was never a middleweight champion from Poland. And the second part, obviously, I'm fighting for my family, for my uh, for my beautiful ch children, to to give them a better better future. Future. Great. Well, good luck and thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, and uh, Jake Donovan next, please. Great. Thank you, Lewis. Hey, Peter. Um, if you Jake. Um, this fight has been on the books for Camille for quite a long time. I wanted to ask if there was any point where he felt like this fight wasn't going to happen in 2020 or just simply not even happen at all. Ta, ta walka była, Kamil, planowana od naprawdę bardzo długiego czasu. Czy był taki moment, kiedy pomyślałeś, nie, ta walka się nie zdarzy w 2020, a być może nie zdarzy się w ogóle? No były chwile słabości, ale powiem wam szczerze, że Najbardziej motywował mnie obrazek, kiedy patrzyłem na swoje dzieci i wiedziałem, że robię to dla nich. I wtedy, yeah, wtedy, the, wtedy motywacja się odnajdywała. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, there, was a, there was a lot of moments when, when I was, was doubting this thing actually is going to happen, but anytime I was losing motivation, I was looking at my kids and the motivation came, came back right away. Okay, that's a great response. And then I do have one more question. Um, so obviously his last fight was on the same card as Gennady when Gennady had the very tough fight with Sergey uh, Dervinchenko. What did he see in that night where he feels he matches up well against him? Like what would he feel like he can do differently with Gennady Golovkin that no other opponent has been able to do? Uh, ostatnia twoja walka, podobnie jak Triple G, była na tej samej gali, kiedy Triple G walczył z Derevyachenko. Oglądając tą walkę z Derevyachenko, jaka jest twoja opinia? na temat tego, co pokazał uh, Gołowkin w tym, w tym pojedynku, plus co mógłbyś zrobić, żeby wypaść z nim lepiej? Przede wszystkim to Drewiaczynko zrobił dobrą robotę, dlatego to Gołowkin wyglądał tak, jak wygląda w tej walce. Tak? To wielkie brawa dla Drewiaczynki. Ja właśnie bardzo mocno wzorowałem się na tej walce i będę chciał na pewno podobno, podobny, podobną taktykę dobrać to Drewiaczynko, tylko że z jednym, z jednym wątkiem że jeszcze bardziej podkręcić to wszystko, żeby, żeby wygrać tę walkę, bo Drewiaczynki, dla Drewiaczynki naprawdę mało brakowało. Now, first of all, the Triple G looked how he looked because Drewiaczynko was so good. I mean, this was, uh, this is, this was a great fight by, by Sergei and I was looking this fight very closely to be like Drewiaczynko, but I want to up the tempo a little bit, a little bit more than Drewiaczynko did because it was very close for him to beat uh, Gennady this night. Okay, great. Thanks, Peter. Camille, best of luck on Friday. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Dick. Thank you. Okay, and uh, just one more question, please, for uh, Camille, and that's from uh, Xavier, please. Camille, how are you feeling? 
congratulations on this fight for you. You you're coming into this, you're coming into this fight, you know, 21 and 0, five KOs. Triple G is coming into this fight, 40, 40 wins, 40, 35 KOs. What what can we expect from you to do differently in regards to try to, to you know, defeat Triple G? And can we expect a different type of style from you than everybody else that has tried to, you know, defeat Triple G? Your style, your power, are you planning to, you know, really take the fight to him or are you trying to outbox him, out slick him? You know, what, what can we expect to see different from every other opponent that Triple G has, has defeated against you? Pytanie jest, dotyczy podstawowej rzeczy. Wielu pięściarzy przed walką, taki odrobinę powiem, wielu pięściarzy przed walką miało plan, żeby walczyć z Gennadiem Gołowkinem i te walki przegrywali. Kolega po, porównał twój rekord nokautów, jego rekord nokautów. Czego możemy się po tobie spodziewać innego? Co możesz ty wnieść do walki, czego inni nie potrafili wnieść i pokonać Gennadia Gołowkina? To znaczy ja przede wszystkim będę chciał narzucić swoje tempo i zauważyłem, że wielu zawodników w pewnym momencie zaczęło się cofać przed Gołowkinem, a dla Gołowkina to tak naprawdę to szło na rękę. Tak? Ja w żadnym momencie nie będę chciał dać się zepchnąć Gołowkinowi, boksować swoje, narzucić swój styl i to jest mój klucz do zwycięstwa. The most important part when you fight Triple G, and many people do this when they fight, when I fight him, is they, they start going backwards. You cannot fight backwards uh, uh, when you fight uh, Triple G because this is what he actually likes. This is not what I want to do. I want I wanted him to fight my tempo, my style, and never, uh, never fight like he wants to do. I want him to fight like I want him to do. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Camille. And of course, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank always. You. See you. Help. Thank you, guys. So uh, we've got John Ryder with us now. John is, uh, is Winkle, mate. I'm going to turn my camera on because like, we need to uh, we need to commiserate a little bit. So. Uh, I thought I'd go a bit old school just for you. How's it going, Winks? How are you doing, mate? I've gone for the old bruised banana look. Mate, lovely t-shirt. <laughs> Takes you back to be childhood. <laughs> it's, it's, we, it's all we've got right now. It's all we've got, mate. We can only look back. But you're not looking back. You're looking forward. You're looking to, uh, to get back into action this weekend. And then we're looking for a big 2021. Yeah, massively, mate. I mean, um, obviously... 2020 weren't the year we all hoped for, was it? Well, to start with. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, obviously, you're, you, it's kind of a, you know, with all, with, with all due respect to Michael Guy this weekend, you're obviously looking at this to, to get some, uh, to rust off. Obviously, you know, any, any fighter is a dangerous fighter, but there's no doubt that you'll have your, your plans in place with Eddie and, and with Tony Sims for what's going to happen next. Yeah, 100%. But look, like, Obviously, I've, I've boxed better opposition, but for me now, my guy is the most dangerous opponent in front of me and the most important fight to happen. So, I mean, if, if I've got to come through this to, to look to build on and make momentum for, for a big 2021. Fantastic. Great. I think we've got some questions lined up. So, Ames first, please, mate. Ames here for Box News TV. Pleasure to see you again, John. How are you? And you, mate. I'm not too bad. Weren't too long ago we was, we was talking like this, was it? No, it wasn't too long ago. I mean, it's good to see you going to be back in the ring on Friday again. Yeah, I mean, I'm buzzing. It's, um, it's great to be here. Obviously, we're, we're locked up at the moment for the next uh, four hours, possibly, maybe five. But um, yeah, it's great to be here. Hopefully, we'll all get the, the, the negative results so we can all mingle in the bubble as of this evening or tomorrow morning and really get the fight week underway. So you haven't had the result just yet? No, we was all, I was tested at 10.30 this morning. Um, I think a few of us were before and after. So yeah, we, look, we should all know by this evening, hopefully. Hopefully you get the uh, result you want in there. Uh, when I spoke to you last time, the opponent wasn't finalised, but it's now all over the line, pending obviously anything crazy happening. Good to be just back in the ring full stop for sure. Oh, 100%. I mean, the result I wanted was three points for Arsenal the other day. So, um, <laughs> yeah, better. So a negative a negative corona, corona test will, will be even better. I read um, 
you talking about this fight being an added bonus for you in that you're sharing the bill with one of your all-time favorites, Triple G. Talk to me about how you, as a fighter, view and appreciate what Triple G does in the ring. Well, look, he's a beast, and he's a, uh, you can see what he's done. And against British fighters, fighters I respect, and he's, he's dis- dismantled them. Do you know what I mean? He's a great fighter. I've been lucky enough to come to the States last year and fight on a, a Canelo undercard. And, I mean, we're talking about ticking things off, li- off the, uh, the wish list here. Do you know what I mean? To box on a, a Canelo undercard now, a Golovkin undercard, it will, will be a great thing. Is he someone you'd want if it could be made in the future? Listen, if he wants to come up to 168, then let's have it. Anyone. But um, yeah, there's no there's no future for me at 160. Um, I'd have to cut a leg off and <laughs> there's no Paralympic boxing just yet. Michael Guy, look, you're the consummate professional. Is this a case of just being professional and taking Michael Guy as he is? And like you said, the, the toughest opponent uh, to date in your career. No, look, my, my guy's got my respect. I mean... Most people I've, I've boxed have been six foot plus and uh, always been the bigger guy. And I'm going against Mike Guy, who's, I think he's an inch shorter. And um, yeah, I mean, every, every advantage I used in, in the past myself is, is now against me. So it's going to be strange, something I have to adjust and, and work with, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I understand that you've said that you're on standby for the Canelo Callum Smith fight. Could you confirm that for me? Uh, Eddie did mention it just in case there was any negative results, but um, I mean, I think I'm, I'm five hours away by plane, and I mean, um, yeah, I mean, if something really goes goes wrong, then then we'll be there. But uh, fully focused on Mike Guy and, and fighting this Friday, not Saturday. Would you do you know if would you be on standby in the event Canelo pulled out for some reason? So what I'm saying is there, would you then come in against Callum Smith? Would that happen? Well, I don't know how that would work. I'm sure they would keep the show going as this um, a big event. But obviously, to be fair, the fans over here are here to see Canelo, aren't they? And um, he's the big draw. So, yeah, I mean, I really don't know. I, doubt they, I don't think they would scrap a show. But, yeah, I mean, I suppose it works both ways. And not looking past your opponent, but is it all eyes on Tudov next year if and when you come through this fight and have a big 2021? No, no, honestly, I was firmly focused on Mike Guy. Um, get a job there and uh, enjoy Christmas, then look towards 2021. And my two final questions in one, can I get your prediction for your fight with Mike Guy? And can I take your prediction for Callum Smith versus Canelo, please? Uh, a win for me and a win for my little ginger sidekick, Canelo. All the best. Thank you for your time, John. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Matt, uh, behind the gloves next, please. Hey, John, how's it going? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, all good. All good, pal. Um, what's preparation been like in the build-up to this fight, obviously with the pandemic going on? Have you had to adjust anything or adapt your training in a certain way? Uh, it's been long and uncertain. Um, I mean, obviously, the first lockdown, I was fully locked down at home with missus and kids, so doing what I could at home. Um, through I think in mid mid June, early July, I was back in the gym, helping the lads out with sparring towards their dates. Just just trying to work on a date for myself. Um, was looking like September, then pushed back to November. Um, nothing really come of that. So then we we were looking at the AJ undercard, and then this come up. So I mean, a bit further than the O2, but it's nice to be out again. The last time you were out, obviously, everyone knows you were in a very close fight with Callum Smith. A lot of people had you winning that fight, although that was obviously a bit of a downer for you. But do you think more good than bad came out of that because you showed that you are able to compete at world level and that you're ready for these big, you know, these big clashes? Yeah, I think it did my career any harm. Um, I just think the only, the only downside to it is that we've had this crap start to a year where neither one of us could move on from it and the, the, do you know what I mean? we, we, we've been treading water now for, for a year and both is still fresh on so many people's mind that last fight of us two um, all changing Friday and Saturday when we both have both have our next our next bats and we can move forward what do you know about your opponent coming into this? Obviously, everyone's mentioned you're heavily favourite for this um, for this for this fight um, is it difficult though not to overlook at what could be for next year? 
No, not at all. I mean, listen, it's it's a long time out the ring, a year. Um, you look at Mike Guy, he's, he's, what's he, had 12 wins, five losses, one draw. But, I mean, he's only ever been stopped by David Trenko. And we know what David Trenko brings to the table. He had a, he had a good fight with Golovkin. Tough fight with Charlo. He's a, he's a real tough cookie. And I know he's a, a career middleweight, but he's, he's a big puncher. So, I mean, it was it was late on in the fight when Mike Guy got stopped. Maybe it was tiredness. But, yeah, he's, he's obviously a tough customer. And, and like I say, he's, he's a shorter guy than me. So it's going to be something I have to adapt to and, and overcome. Do you think the fight goes the distance or do you think you'll be able to get him out there? Uh, I'm just going to take my time. Hopefully you can get him out there. But listen, if, if it's not not no no problem if it if it goes to points because it'd be nice to get some rounds on my belt. It's been a year. No worries. Thanks for your time, John. And thank good you. Luck. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. And uh, Deck Taylor next, please. Cheers, Ant. Hi, John. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. You? Good. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, obviously, like you said, there's been a year, well, over a year now since the Smith fight, but. Also during lockdown or since boxing's come back has obviously been some great nights like in the, the fight camp stuff and beyond that as well. As, how hard has that been for fans? It's been great, but how hard has it been for you just watching these fights happen and not being able to get a date and not be, being able to get involved? Well, listen, it's been, initially it's been that the whole lockdown thing wasn't the end of the world for me. I've got a young family, so it was nice to spend time with them, but fair enough, it was nice to watch my, my teammates do well, watch watch Ted Cheeseman get his career back on track with a winner regular and watch Felix Cash really step up and, and beat Jason Wellborn. So I'd, I'd say I get a lot of joy from watching my, my friends do well and, and, and start winning and look at the performance Conor Ben put in. It was like, I've helped all these people in preparation for their camp. So I knew my time would come and it was just about getting fit and, and being ready. And now I'm I've got the Trump card, I suppose. I've got to go out to Florida where they box in Brentwood. So that um, that locked the first lockdown anyway. That was your first real time as a sort of stay at home dad, I guess, because you're in in the gym the rest of the time. So you've had a bit of time to to do that. It must be must be nice. Yeah, it has been. I mean, um, I've got two kids and a partner, and I've realised that they're quite nice people. Having spent so much time <laughs> with them, so um, she might not say the same about me, and neither the kids. But um, no, it's been nice. I mean, and this boxing life passes you by so quickly and it's nice to kind of press the pause button a bit and, and get to do something different to the norm. Obviously this one, day before Callum Smith's out as well, as it happens, um, is he, or the rematch with him, is he still the target or if he if he loses, is he, you know, out of the picture fit as far as you're concerned? Well, how, do you, for me, how do you see that? For me, if he loses, he goes up to 175 because I think that's the natural move for him. I think that he's, his time is limited at 168 I think I showed that last year um, I'm actually surprised he's having such a big fight at 168 but I mean I suppose if you're going to lose to anyone at, at this weight then let it be the pound for pound number one Just one last one um, I'm, you know I know you don't want to look, look uh, beyond Friday but if all goes well and you could pick your next opponent who, who's, the, who's the number one target for you? Um, I'd like some of the big names in the sports. I've, I've, I've openly called out Danny Jacobs and, and Canelo, so I'm happy to step up. But for, I mean, Eddie has spoke about the fight with Trudenoff for the WBA regular, so I'm really open to that. The potential of fighting David Lemieux. I mean, there's not a bit, not no needle there, but that fight was meant to happen a year ago on the Canelo undercard and, and didn't materialise because he got a hand injury. So, I mean, these are both fights that I'd, I'd love to, to make. Nice one. Thanks, mate. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Dick. And Ryan Elliott, next, please. Hiya, John. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, I'm good. Look, I'm only one from me. I think the guys have covered just about everything. Just to touch on Mike Guy, obviously fighting him Friday night. Very durable guy. Uh, you mentioned he's only been stopped by Derevianchenko. Even that was after eight rounds. Was it important for you to see out the year and return against someone that is going to give you rounds after a year of inactivity and going into big fights next year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, there's no point in going in there and blasting someone out in one round. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, it's been a year at the ring. I want to test myself and just get the engine engine going properly and give it a good run out. And I mean, not, not saying that I'm just 
like, that's the sole purpose. I mean, my guys obviously got different plans for this, so uh, uh, I'm going to have to be fully focused on it and not take it lightly at all. I think Ames touched on it. Gennady Golovkin is someone you admire immensely. All being well with your fight, you're going to be sneaking out and trying to catch the main event as well? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I don't know what the, the rules are here, if you can watch or if you've got to get back to the to the bubble or such. But um, yeah, hopefully I can get up close and, and watch it ringside and and see, see him up close. Right, John, well, all the best and thank you for joining us. Cheers, Ryan. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Ryan. And uh, Gail Falkenthal with the last question for, for uh, John, please. Thank you very much. Hello, John. Hi. You know, I was with a lot of people who questioned those scorecards a year ago. Do you think it was one of those fights which, despite the loss on your record, raised your stature in the eyes of many people? Gail, can I just ask, is that a backdrop or is that your real living? That I will confess is a backdrop. Oh, it looks lovely. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> We're in the spirit, man. We're in the spirit. Oh, no, it looks great. <laughs> um, yeah, no, do you know what? I took a lot of credit from that fight and um, I just feel that boxing fans are real. I mean, they um, obviously they they can be fickle at times, but they 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 just, I think people, fight fans want to see, see justice. And I mean, the majority of the people the feedback I've had on social media has, has been very pro that I should be world champion now, but I'm not, and, and things didn't work out that way. Sometimes they don't, but you never know what comes of them. Thank you so much, and all the best this week. Good luck. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Thanks, Gail, and thanks, John. Um, have, a, have a good one out there, mate. Take it easy. Best to uh, Tony and the rest of the boys, and um, get back home safe. Get Well, get out of the ring safe and get back home safe. All right, mate. See you next year, John. <laughs> See you soon, mate. <laughs> Take care, Thank, Thank you Bye -bye. so much. Let's bring in uh, Rashad Matty. Sorry guys, I think we're just waiting for Rashad to uh, to get his camera working and so forth, so we won't be long. Hello. Hey, there he is. Oh my God! It was. I don't know what's going on. I was like, I'm trying to make yeah. this work. We were looking for an Albanian bear, and we found one. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, thank God. How about you guys? Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Good to have you on the line. It's uh, your second time in in the exact same bubble, just over a month apart. Exactly. Yeah. Um. I told Eddie I want to be active. Uh. It was a fast fight last time. Um. Hopefully, make it again, and hopefully, have the same outcome. Good stuff. Well, thanks for joining us, pal. We're going to hand over straight away for questions. So, uh, Ames first again, please. Ames here for Boxing News TV. Rashad, could you just do me a quick favor and turn your mic this way for me, please? Oh, your camera, sorry. How about okay. this? This is okay? If you could turn it from like sideways, if possible. How's this? Uh, I did. It hasn't switched. Um, no, Maybe just it's... turn it. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. No problem. Um, How about now? Yeah, that's perfect. Brilliant. Thank you, Resha. Aims here for Boxing News TV. Good to speak to you again. It doesn't seem like too long ago that we were speaking to you before your fight against Marcus Mahika. So you're back in action again. Did you expect to be out this early after the last one? 
Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think it was a fast performance. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody, uh, Eddie and all them liked the way I performed. Uh, I didn't take any shots that were, you know, super bad. I got hit with some shots that I wasn't happy with, but, uh, overall it was a good fight. You know, the fight ended soon faster than actually faster than anybody else did. So <laughs> I get, I can brag about that a little bit, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm doing my thing. This guy that I'm fighting is Okay, he's tough, you know. He's beat a lot of undefeated fighters, so I'm ready to do it. I suppose this kind of shows the faith that Eddie Hearn and DeZone have to bring you back on once again to help close out the year. Yeah, uh, well, it was supposed to be a six-fight the rest of the year since March. We had a thing that we wanted to do six fights for the rest of the year, but uh, COVID hit and it kind of messed up everything. But uh, I'm grateful to have at least two, and we'll see what's going on. So, uh, Dennis Okoth in a sixth rounder, is this just a case of you kind of gaining more experience then? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, to be honest with you, we had a bunch of guys that came out and was like, yo, you want to fight this guy? You want to fight this guy? You want to fight this guy? Um, he was a guy that was like last minute type of thing. I only had two weeks notice for this fight. Right. So, um, we trained where we had to train. I was still in shape, so I was still doing my thing. Um, but, you know, we had some guys we, we had offered. We took him. They said, oh, he doesn't have a visa. It wasn't working out. He did, he took another fight. He didn't want to fight. All right, he's out. So this guy, he didn't want to fight. All right, so this guy was like, okay, I'll do it. Mm. I don't see why not. And, uh, yeah, it worked out. Last time out, I watched an interview with you where you said you felt your opponents have now been, like, watching tapes of you and you're starting to find it a little, maybe a little more challenging because people are seeing more of you now and you've had to maybe switch it up more. Do you think that's going to play a factor in the fight uh, at the weekend? Um, you, you've seen the way this guy fought, uh, the last guy that I fought. He, he yeah. saw that he was able to close up and, and he was waiting for a lot of the body shots, and a lot of the shots that I was throwing. He was a little awkward. Um, but like I said, nobody fights the way that I fight. Um, it's a little bit different when you watch the guy and then when you experience the guy in the fight. And um, I'm able to adapt in certain situations. So if I feel like one thing's working and one thing's not working, I can change it like that. And uh, the credits to my coach is Sosa and my father. And I just listened to them and, you know, it's been working so far. I'm a big, big fan of the lavish boxing outfits. You had a Superman inspired one last time. What you got planned this time? Uh, I, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint, a little bit, nothing crazy. Um, it's another superhero. It's right. just, uh, it's not Superman. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> like, so you mentioned about having six fights that were planned obviously this year like when you look back on this year what with the way that the world's been affected you've been out uh, as well obviously have you been able to achieve the goals or of or what you set out for yourself this year despite all those problems um yeah i mean like i said i was out a year before exactly the same time march april i was out i had a shoulder injury i was out uh it taught me you know it came up up and down so, brought me back I wasn't I wasn't in shape when I got back in shape um so I came back and it was a little bit of a roller coaster it was going up and down this was kind of had the same opportunity same position but I kept my mind right and I said listen I'm time to set this weight time to do this thing right and it, it kind of uh woke me up um I like I said I'm just ready to go I'm ready to fight and um you know I'm looking to be the guy that's like all right this is the guy that I want everybody watching uh this is the prospect that everybody's wanting to watch it doesn't matter take, if it's Matt Freeman talking about top rank, PBC, it doesn't matter. I want them to say, listen, this guy, Albanian Bear, he's something different. Taking your mind away f uh, for a moment from yourself, in what's been received as a strange result, a uh, fellow fighter just recently signed to Matt Freeman, Albanian Florin Mark, who got a draw over the yeah. weekend. Have you seen that fight? What was your reaction? Yeah, I watched it. Listen, he's a very, very, very good friend of mine. Um, very, very nice guy. Um that decision was horrible. I don't I don't know how they did they had it to draw. Um I don't know. I that I I don't know how you guys are saying it. I don't know how you guys are thinking about it. I didn't see the draw at all. I thought he won, you know, majority of the rounds, if not all of the rounds. Hmm. Um and plus that knockdown, it, it doesn't add up. Final one from me. Big division you're in. Justin Spence come back. I want to know what you want for yourself next year. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going on what what pieces my manager and, and Eddie want to do. 
Uh, I'm down to fight nobody, uh, anybody. I, it doesn't bother me. Uh, none of these guys scare me. I, I'm the type of guy that's they get have they have two arms, two legs. I have two arms, two legs. That's how it's supposed to go. There's no reason for me to intimidate them. I know my skill. I know how I am. Um, but I want them all. I want them all, and I'm gonna take them out one by one. All the best, Russia. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ames and Cornerman next. Hey, what's up, Marty? How you doing, champ? What's up, brother? How you feeling? I'm great, man. Good to see you back, man. So, I mean, you mentioned the injury, champ. How's that feeling, you know, now that you've been back, you know, in activity and stuff like that? It's good. Um, Like I said, it's better than how it was before. They had me at a, in a card, and I just couldn't move my shoulder no more. Uh, I couldn't even lift it up, and I uh, was just trying to deal with it. And uh, thank God it went well. Um, surgery went well. I had my time off that I did my physical therapy, I did all that stuff. So I I feel good. My weight's good. I'm just ready to go. Right. Now, as we know, you're a big ticket seller, man. Do you think uh, with, with no fans being allowed in the arena, do you think that could affect uh, your ability to, to get on certain cards? And, you know, because that's important as far as, as you know what I mean, as a fighter. Um, For me, I don't care if there's fans, no fans. You know, I know my, my fans are going to be watching online anyway on the zone. Um, I'm just here to do my thing. I'm here to put on a good show for everybody. At the end of the fights, I want people to say, listen, I'm going to start watching this kid. And that's my goal. I want them to be like, you know what? This guy, I'm going to keep watching him. I'm going to keep him up to date. And I want to gain more fans of off how I fight, let alone social medias and all that stuff. Because I don't care about social media. I don't care about none of that. I just want to put on a good show because this is my job. And I want to make sure my job is... Mm -hmm. The best I can do it. Right. Now, champ, uh, I was going to say, you're, you're coming from a special generation, the next wave of New York fighters, you know, uh, whether it's you, Nikita, Koba, you're all pretty much in the same camp. What do you feel separates you from these other talents that's, that's become an elite in, in boxing? You're talking about for, uh, how, how my gym and how, how our teammates are together with everybody no, else? Like, like what separates you personally from all the other new guys of your generation coming up? Uh, I feel like I have a different style compared to everybody else. Um, you see my teammate Christopher Colbert looked amazing the last fight. Um, I just I'm we we're just different people when it comes out to the gym. You know, we all fight completely different. Um, and so far it's been working for all of us, and we're doing all good. But like I said, in the 47 division, I, I want to claim my prize, and I want to become the guy that's like, listen, this is the guy that everybody has to be careful of. If it's either 147 or I go down to 140. Um, but like I said. You know, I, we've been doing good, you know, after each fight, you know, I watched some of the other fights that he, he fought, all these other guys, they had problems with other un, undefeated fighters. I made it look the easiest, you know, I made it look good and all that stuff. So I, my plan is to win every round, dominate, and uh, each fight, I don't go in there being like, yes, I'm going to knock this guy out. My fight, my goal is to make it look like I'm going to torture this guy until he quits. Mm. And that's, that's how I want it to happen. Of course, I want it to be okay. I don't want no problems no afterwards, but... That's the goal of each fight. And uh, so far, it's been looking good. Been doing my job right. And hopefully, keep it towards that way. Right. And lastly, uh, you mentioned wanting to be uh, go out six times this past year. Are you still looking to do that in 2021? I'm trying to be even more active in 2021. Mm. If, they, if they have more cards, I want it. I want each <laughs> card. So um, it depends on what Eddie and uh, my manager want to do. And I, I just go on from there. All right, champ. Thank you so much. Wish you the best Thank for you. Friday night going forward. I appreciate it, but thank you. Peace. Thank you. Ryan Elliott next, please. Hi, Rashad. How are you? How you doing? How's everything? Yeah, very good. Look, back again this Friday. This must be becoming a bit of a home from home for you. You're back again in the bubble. How do you summarize your first bubble experience, though? What was it like? It was a little awkward because there was nobody there. You know, it was super, super quiet. It was the first time I actually heard my coaches. Um, but overall, it was good. It went clear. Um Job was done. Job was done correctly. Uh, I did make a little flaws here and there. But overall, the, the job was good. I had no issues, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. What's this fight about for you on Friday night, Rashad? Is this about ending the air in style? Um, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. You know, uh, like I said, we only had this two-week notice of the fight. Um, I was like, do you want to take it? I said, I want to take it. I'm good. I'm ready to go. Um, but like I said, when I told it before, I want to look good. I want to look devastating. I want to look at, at the end of this fight, I want people to say, listen, this guy is no joke. This guy's here to fight, and this guy's uh, devastating. 
this will be your third fight of the year. You did have, have, have that little gap when the pandemic first came about, though. When you look, look back and summarise on your 2020, given we're coming at the end of the year, what would you say is the main thing you learned this year or, or improved on? Uh, to stay patient, to stay relaxed. Um, just let time do its own time, pretty much how it is. Uh, I'm not looking to be like, you know what, I want this, 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 this. Because at the end, when I first got hurt, I was trying to be patient, patient, go work, 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 work. Now it's time to relax, do my own things, um, and just overall stay relaxed. And, and uh, just follow what Eddie wants to do and what my managers want to do and my coaches. Now, Rashad, one thing I want to ask you about, you've already spoken about Florian Marcus's result last weekend. We saw that fight over here in the UK. Eddie Hearn yeah. was on his Instagram Live talking about you a couple of weeks ago, and he said even though he thinks neither of you guys would want to do it, he would love to one day see you and Florian in the ring together, a, a huge all-Albanian fight. If that fight became too big to ignore, do you think one day that could happen? Um, you know, actually, previously they wanted to put me tonight, actually, against another Albanian, a, fellow, a friend of mine, too. Uh, and it's, it's, it's hard. I, I don't know. It's I have loyalty on my end and uh, I have love for all the Albanians so it's hard for me to sit to watch and fight another Albanian um, it's different because you, you can see like you know, Puerto Ricans will fight out of the previous it's normal it's okay but Albanians is different it's very very different uh, we don't want to fight each other I'm, my end maybe someone else wants to do it and I don't know about that maybe I don't know but for me it's I don't know I don't, I don't see myself uh, wanting to do that I'm same card absolutely I would love to do it but if he wants to fight, and you never know. All right, Rashad. Well, thank you very much. Good luck Friday night. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Ryan. And final question for Rashad from uh, Crystal, please. <laughs> Hi, Rashad. Uh, How are you? Good. Everything goes on at the same time. The dog's barking. Everything uh, is, is, is happening right now. But anyways, well, I was going to say you've been very uh, busy. Uh, you know, I, I just seem to have talked to you in November. So I wanted to know how this fight uh, came about and, and your preparation. You probably still are in shape because it was just November 7th and, and you knocked out uh, this gentleman. So tell me a little bit about this fight that's upcoming. Um, I mean, once I got back from Miami, I was still in the gym. Uh, I'm sorry, Hollywood, Florida. Uh, I was still in the gym. I was still training a lot of stuff. But they gave me two week notice to say, like, listen, you want to fight uh, December 18th? I said, yeah, I'll do it. Um, for me, I don't mind. Um, the problem was the finding the opponents was a little bit of an issue part because a lot of people were backing out or some of them couldn't make the weight in time. Meanwhile, uh, I was good. I was ready. Uh, I didn't want to go up too high. But I was I was good. I was ready to do it. I just wanted to fight and I uh, just wanted to uh, – just to be like, listen, this guy's active and we love to see him fight. So I want to give my fans a good show. And and how do you feel being on a Gennady Golovkin, I mean, card? This is, he is just one of the greats in elite athletes. And here you are on his card. Did you think that this moment would come about? Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Triple G, uh, but I've been on good cards. I've been on a lot of good cards. So for me, the main card is... Uh, my eyes, I'm the main card. I want, to see the show. I want to be the person that's like, you know what? I want to watch this guy, this guy only. Uh, when I fought in New York, a lot of times they came to watch me fight and then they took off. So uh, Eddie was like, please let him stay a little bit. But, you know, at the end of the day, I want to be the guy that's like, listen, we want to watch this guy and this guy only. This is the main guy we want to watch. Um, kind of steal the show. But that's just how I am. Well, good luck there and good luck in uh, 21. You. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And uh, <clears throat> thanks, Rashad. Take care over there, mate. Go well on Friday night. And um, Thank thanks you. for your time, as always, pal. Take care. Uh, Thank you, guys. And thanks, everybody. Um, oh, look at a little bit, of, a little bit of shadow to finish with from Rashad there, the razzle-dazzle. <laughs> just, just a little bit. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. Thanks so much to those in the uh, to those over here in the U.S. Happy holidays to you as well after the a week, great weekend of fights. To my friends back home in the U.K., Merry Christmas and um, yeah, everybody stay safe. And we'll be sending this around to everybody um, 